Welcome back to all my magic friends out there in YouTube. In this week's episode of Erudite Magic, we're going back into the Art of Astonishment trilogy with book two. This is a study guide and not necessarily a review. The subtle difference being that in a study guide, I'm going to point you towards tricks that I found to be insightful, interesting, or useful to me. However, I'm counting on all of you erudite magicians to jump in down in the comments section below and let us hear from you. What are some of your favorite pieces of strange to unleash the moment from Paul Harris in Art of Astonishment, volume two? Let's dive right in and we'll do what we did before, which is I will break this down into sections with a timestamp down below so that you can jump around to the pieces that are interesting to you. Starting with close up, the whole book is written by a close up magician. So when I use the term close up, what do I really mean? I'm saying any magic that can be performed in an intimate setting with something other than playing cards. Don't worry, there's a playing card section coming. And while these tricks are for close up, with just a little bit of thought, they can be performed for a much larger audience size. Like in the first book, Paul Harris opens this second book with a piece of magic related to a dollar bill. In Counterfeit Spectator, you borrow a bill from a willing participant, and when you show them the signature of the treasurer and lightly rub your finger over it, the signature changes to the name of your participant. And you can immediately hand the bill out back to your participant as an unforgettable souvenir. This is a great point to say that as with all Paul Harris pieces, they're relatively easy to do, so none of this is going to require hardcore sleight of hand. We've all been there. You've been to a party where the host or hostess knows that you perform some magic and says, hey, do some magic for us. Sometimes you don't have a pack of playing cards with you or you can't gather the required props, but in Fizzmaster, Paul Harris has given us a piece of magic that can be performed at any picnic or gathering where there are carbonated beverages available. The effect is that a performer takes two cans of carbonated beverages and allows the participant to shake one of them vigorously for a length of time. The other can is set unshaken at rest in full view of the audience. With just a little bit of woo-woo, the magician causes the carbonation from the shaken can to transition to the unshaken can and proves it by opening the shaken can with nary a splash. However, the unshaken can that's been there in full view the whole time is opened and beverage goes everywhere. And yes, you might be wondering, it is completely impromptu. So again, if you have two cans of carbonated beverage, you're set to go and present an unforgettable piece of magic for an impromptu show. In addition to impromptu magic, Paul Harris also gives you versions of commercially released effects, some of which were released after these books were published. For example, Breaking Point is something that I find to be very similar to Gregory Wilson's Pointless. In effect, a pen tip keeps changing positions on the performer as he's trying to write something with the pen. It's another impromptu piece using nothing more than a Bic pen and a little bit of knowledge and practice from a seasoned magician. With the popularity of all these different balance type effects. You have Joshua J's balance. There's new releases, balancing cell phones, cards, lighters, you name it. There are all kinds of those, but Paul Harris has a version called Tensegrity, which allows you to balance a card off of another playing card and put a pin on top of that. So if you've thought about performing or buying some kind of balance effect, you can buy this book for probably about the same price or in many cases, even less than a balance effect, still learn a piece of magic that might play for you. And many magicians know that Harry Eng produced some amazing bottles filled with objects that obviously couldn't fit inside the glass. Well, in book two here of the series, Paul Harris is going to teach you how you can make your own Harry Eng mystery bottles by putting a pack of playing cards in a milk bottle or by putting a ping pong ball in a small glass jar. Those aren't exactly effects, but they are pieces of strange that you can have sitting around your home or office to initiate those discussions and potentially give you an opportunity to perform some real magic. Twilight is a beautiful piece of magic using some coins, a mirror, 
and a table. The late great magician Doug Henning actually performed Twilight on one of his TV magic specials. And if you've ever seen a clip of this here on YouTube, it is a gorgeous piece of magic and you can learn two versions here in this book. Super Sack is a utility device using nothing more than a brown paper bag but it'll allow you to do some real miracles. The utility works like this. The bag is produced at any point in your show and displayed to be completely sealed. It's folded over and stapled in three different spots, completely closed off. But you being the magician, whatever item you've recently vanished can reappear inside the sealed paper bag. Whether that's a card or any other small object, you can produce it from a sealed bag. Of course, what kind of book about close-up magic would be complete without a section dedicated to cards? Much of Paul Harris's card magic is completely off the beaten path, so you're not going to find your grandpa's 21 card trick, although you will find some interesting versions of classic plots. If you remember me talking about Reset from the first book and how great that is, you're going to like Hiccup from this book. While in Reset, the cards are changing places between the magician's hands and the table, in Hiccup, a jack and an ace change places between the magician's hand and the participant's hand. So it is a great closing piece to reset if that's the type of effect you like. If you like truly commercial pieces of card magic, and by that, I mean something that you can put a customer's name or a participant's name or something big for that one special person that you need to seal a deal, then you're going to want to look at the fluffer deck. The participant will sign their name across the face of a card and with just a little bit of magic, you make their name disappear from that card, but you make their name appear in large letters across the backs of the entire deck. Paul Harris even mentions that one of his friends likes to do this at trade shows by making the competitor's name disappear and his company's name appear on the backs of the cards. So you can see how commercial this could be. When I was young, one of the things that drew me to book two of this set was the collection of linking card effects here called connections. This section of the book has three different versions of the linking card routines, starting with his original cardboard connection, which is a two card linking card routine. If you're not familiar with what I mean by linking cards, the performer is going to tear the center out of two different cards and then proceed to link them and unlink them in a very magical manner. Later, after Cardboard Connection, Paul Harris published The Immaculate Connection through Tannen's Magic Shop as a pamphlet release. David Copperfield thought so highly of this effect that he actually performed it on one of his TV magic specials. The Immaculate Connection version uses three playing cards to link, unlink, and cause them to fall through each other. But he doesn't stop there. He gives you a third version that is not by him, but contributed by someone else, and it's different than the other two entirely. It is done with two playing cards, like Cardboard Connection, but instead of tearing the centers out of them, you're tearing centers out of each half of those cards, making it look like a number eight. They link and unlink in a lot of surprising and intricate ways, this is more of a close-up piece performed for someone who can see what you're doing and wouldn't play as well for a large audience, although obviously the Immaculate Connection and Cardboard Connection could play just fine to a parlor or stage size audience. To me, I just love the thought of doing something really strange with cards like tearing them, because when you start to tear cards, people know you're no ordinary magician and you're doing something way different than what they've seen before. Stretch is a unique piece of magic with a rubber band and a deck of cards where the performer is going to produce aces, but wrapping the deck in a rubber band to ostensibly prevent any kind of cheating. The rubber band penetrates the deck, the deck penetrates the rubber band, and at the end you have a haunted deck production of the four aces where they kick out of the middle of the deck basically on their own. Flapjacks isn't so much a trick as it is a fun way to show four cards on the top of the deck where they flop off the top of the deck when you remove a weight that's been sitting there. It's not necessarily magic, but it sure is fun and it looks amazing. In today's world of Instagram and other ways to get people's attention online, I could see this being a really neat piece of video magic. But if you're wanting to perform it for live audiences, there's a pre-mixed Flapjacks that allows you to get into the setup in front of an audience without it being obvious what you're trying to do. Double Decker is a color changing deck production. You pull an unmatched color deck out of a box 
and proceed to have a card selected. You then pull another deck out of the box of playing cards with the correct color. The participant's card is found and unfound with different color changing items. Basically, the whole effect is a quirky, offbeat deck production producing two decks out of the same box of cards and then causing the participant's card to change color and jump back and forth between the two decks. There's a lot of fun and a lot of magic happening in a short amount of time, so be sure to check that one out. If you prefer card tricks that just use a small packet of cards and not necessarily a deck or two decks as the case may be, you may like uncut version. The Magician displays two half cards and proceeds to lengthen them into full length cards, basically restoring them in the process. It's a really odd and amazing looking piece of magic. In Mr. Lucky, the performer cuts the deck into three different packets and has a participant place a dime, a nickel, or a penny on the backs of the three different packets. They're allowed to change their mind and given a completely free choice. And when you look at the card underneath the coins, they match. There's a 10 under the dime, a five under the nickel, and an ace under the penny. But that's not all. The coins are moved onto the backs and the cards change places by themselves without the magician having to do anything. Although he's not necessarily known for it, Paul Harris does give a few pieces of mentalism as well. In Angel Case, Paul Harris is giving you a utility switching device made out of a box of playing cards. The presentation he gives you is that someone thinks of a question that they have and they drop a piece of blank card and a pen into a card case. The performer shakes it around and when you dump out the card, it now has an answer to a question that someone has written, seemingly written by a ghost. Even though that's the presentation given, the prop itself can be used to switch basically anything and it gives you a few other ideas, but it's limited only by your imagination. Even though it's a card-based piece of mentalism, I think Overkill could be classified as mental magic because the participant is going to choose and think of a card, but the performer shows in increasingly impossible ways that he knew exactly what card the participant was merely going to think of, including some writing on the box, and the card itself has a completely different colored back. It's reminiscent of a cross between Further Than That by Stuart James and Eight Card Brainwave by Nick Trost. Not that it is those effects, it just reminds me of those two things. And finally, there's Million Dollar Mind Reader, which allows the participant to write down a name of someone they care about, and then write down a bunch of other random names. They can write it anywhere on the piece of paper that they want, but when you're given the list, you're able to hone in on which name they actually care about. This is basically a living and dead test and obviously you can tweak it to suit your desired performance. I'll be honest, this is such a small piece of what's in this book. There is so much great magic in here. I'm sure you have favorites that I didn't even mention and there are plenty of other great tricks that are totally worthy of being performed. I just can't go through everything. So whether you heard your favorite trick listed or you didn't, please sound off in the comments below with the tricks that you like from volume two of Paul Harris's Art of Astonishment. If you don't already own these books, I really think that you're making a big mistake. They've been in continuous print for 25 years since the mid nineties, but I don't know how long they're going to be in print. So I recommend that you get your copy now because these are the types of books that you go back again and again and again to read because there's so much wonderful, delightful magic in there. And frankly, the books are very humorous and entertaining on their own. If you don't already have a great local magic shop from which to buy these books, I recommend that you shop with Don's Magic and Books, who's actually sponsoring this episode. Don has these books in stock and ready to ship to you. And this week, he's going to give you 10% off by using the code Harris at checkout. That's right, that's an incredible deal on these books, whether as the set or individually. So please take a moment to check out Don's website, which is linked down in the description below. Be sure to tell him that I sent you and save this week using code Harris at checkout. As always, my friends, I wanna thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and telling your friends about this channel. I love sharing books with all my erudite magic friends out there, and I appreciate hearing from you about the things that you'd like to see on this channel. Stay tuned in the coming weeks because we will be doing book three of this study series, as well as having some interesting interviews with top-notch magicians from Abbott's Magic Get Together. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a line or sound off down in the comments below. But until next time, all my erudite friends,
keep reading.